It's Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with your succulent tip of the day and day one in University City with the fabled Coral Reef Project. Um, we have all been waiting with breath abated for this installation and the day has finally come. So here we are in the before stage. Our, our client, you know, this was actually motivated, this Coral Reef idea spawn of Satan, was actually motivated by some of the plant material that he already has in the garden. Prior to this installation, he had big Dazzlerium longissimums, like six of them in here, and then just an assortment of Portolacaria and shrubs, and just, it was just a lot. But these beautiful crested euphorbias, uh, and plant material that he has is what inspired me to take it all to the next level. So the plants that you see in the garden right now are ones that we are going to excavate and move and use in our coral reef design. Greg is in the process right now of digging up literally all of the irrigation because it was extremely disheveled. They've had some construction done and the irrigation was just busted to shreds. So this is subterranean drip, which is good, but it was broken everywhere. So we're gonna completely reinvent that wheel. Oh, look, Annie. Hair tie. Yeah, there's a hair tie for you. Nice, see, we're already uh, profiting. So what um, are we using and what are we using? Okay, so, you know, clearly we're gonna use these barrel cactus that are hidden behind the Senecio. I'll probably use some of this, some of the Senecio too. I really like the, the compactness and the blue of it. I think with these plants here, you know, we can carefully cut off some nice pieces and harden them and reset them to, uh, for use in our installation. Um, this big Euphorbia bogeri is going to stay right there in that corner and this giant stand of Echeveria harmsii. See, here's the thing, the client loves Echeveria harmsii and you know, who doesn't, but it's getting ready to bloom out. I mean, look, almost every single rosette has a flower on it. So I'm really gonna have to look at this closely later and determine if I can use it or not, because I don't want, you know, a few weeks to pass, it blooms all out, and then we've got this huge spot in the garden with a dead plant. So, what, that, what you were just telling me. What? That we're not using. Oh, what are we not using? Yeah. And yeah. Oh, yes. And the, this Lactea, Euphorbia Lactea, uh, which is very undersea in appearance, but not happy in Michael's garden. It's developed a fungal infection over the years and it is scarred very, very severely. And he really doesn't want that in the installation. So we'll have to find, you know, a new place or a, or an ICU for the Lactea. Uh, look at the gnarliness of this. Yeah, this um, crested cactus is actually, you know, really, really interesting. I mean, it would be a beautiful collectible in a bonsai, as a bonsai, in a bonsai bowl, bowl, I think, with all of that caudex and gnarliness. But we're going to see, you know, what we can do about um, recycling this. Uh, and the... Euphorbia milii there um, doesn't look the best, but I really think it's interesting and looks very under the sea. So Waterwise Botanicals is on their way now with some plants for me. Um, I will be bringing in a big, you know, a big load of plants from Oasis Water Fishing Gardens. Many of you saw the video that I posted yesterday about our trip to the nursery. And I have some special things at home also that I'm going to bring for this project. And the rocks will be arriving tomorrow. So right now we are just going to start moving some plants around, getting prepped. You can see that Greg has got a couple of yards of soil in the trailer. 
we're going to be mounding very dramatically in this garden, which may also necessitate that we extend some drains too. So we'll talk to Greg about that. You can see lights. It's laying on the ground. We're gonna restring the low voltage lighting and redo all the lights on this installation. And we wanna be mindful of the architecture. This is a really, really cool home and very, very interesting architecture that we don't want to cover up. So another fun thing about this coral reef project, there won't be any giant tree plants. Everything is going to be pretty low profile. The elephant in the room, this Pyrus Kawakami tree, that Pyrus Kawakami tree, those are staying. They offer tremendous shade and privacy. Uh, the client loves these trees. So I won't be coral reefing over there but I will be doing some things. Um, hopefully that will be fairly easy to keep clean because this tree does drop a heck of a lot of leaves. Let me help mama. It's Laura, oh, <laughs> you already know that. Um, this is part duh of day one in um, University City, sorry. Uh, and so we're wrapping up. We've got a total of six yards of amended topsoil uh, in this installation. We're going to need three more yards to finish it. And the boulders and rocks, of which there are a t literal ton, more than that, are coming tomorrow morning about 7. And they're just going to be dumped on top of the dirt. And then I'm going to move them as I see fit but there are going to be cliffs in this installation and just extraordinarily interesting gnarly configurations it's ugh, so exciting um Greg effectively uh, dug up all of the disheveled irrigation uh, that had been disrupted when the city came in and and redid the sidewalks the client also put in a new driveway so we're going to start all over with the irrigation We've got low voltage lighting here. That's where you see the flags. So we're going to clip in new lights. Under this Pyr Pyrus Kawakami, um, Hannah and I are knocking around a couple of ideas of what we'd like to do. And we aren't committed to anything yet. So you're just going to have to stay tuned and see how this develops. Tell what I said. Uh, Hannah suggested doing Portolacaria afrovirigata and these Wartkopf aeoniums with, and some cotyledon with, um, with of course boulders and, and top dressing. And it's not that that's not a lovely idea, it is. But we're just, I just know enough to know that if you're unsure, it's important to wait until you are. And if you have some faith in yourself and, if, and in the process of creation, you'll, you'll know when inspiration strikes. And the client, why, why, what are the limitations? And the client also does not want anything spiky or thorny in here, because he doesn't want to have to, you know, poke himself every time he's trying to pull out pull out leaves from the tree so totally understood uh, it'll be stunning whatever we do we have uh, that bookend over there with the Dazzlerian longissimum so that's something that I'm going to be taking into consideration when I'm doing this installation to make sure that both sides are balanced and if you want to see what's under the tarp you'll have to tune in tomorrow um, we also had, say hi. Hi. We also had a delivery from Waterwise Botanicals today. Uh, we got some really fantastic, what I consider to be kind of undersea looking plant material, cotyledons and crassulas. Look at these Cal and Coe Luciers. Aren't they stunning? I got four of these. Super happy with them. Also, um, a new mangave for me. These are called Pineapple Express. So these are fantastic. I got some Echeveria harmsii. All along here are the client's Crassula falcatas, South African falcatas that he wants me to work into the design. So, you know, I'm not going to be working all of them in, but I will take some heads and some tops off and work in as I am able. Waterwise did not disappoint with this Crassula Argentia sunset either. Look at that. It is ye as yellow as that bag of patio plus. Oh, 
gorgeous. Love it. Wow. Okay. Um, another fantastic surprise that we're going to be working in. Oh, and I got my driftwood also from Driftwood Larry, a.k.a. Um, Driftwood Larry. Got it at Waterwise Botanicals. But this, I think it's backwards. I think... You know, and again, I don't know, I don't know how I'm going to stage this thing. I'm leaning toward this because it kind of takes me to the place of being like a crashing wave, but we'll, we'll just drift wood on the beach. Yeah, we'll see. You know, it'll tell me. Um, sneak peek, look in here. Isn't this so pretty? You guys, this house and this property, look at the lattice work up here in this uh, portico or courtyard. It's just stunning. Water Every square inch of this place is so oh, no. cool. Uh, this was a gift from a neighbor. This Montrose, this crest. I'm going to get to use this in the installation. And super oh, stoked with this tumbled glass. This is going to get worked in on top of some creva at some point in this design. Um, Every, literally every color of the rainbow, uh, which reminds me, happy pride. Uh, if you haven't yet, get your gear at the store and join Team DFS. 50% of all the proceeds will go to Equality California. Thank you guys so much for, for that. Um, okay, so as we get go, this is just day one. I'm going to take Stay you here. around. Stay here. Okay, I'm going to take you around the back. I'm going to show you some more of the client's collection that they're going to let us use in the installation. Um, I've got some special things from home that I'm going to be bringing in as well. So this is one, this is one you are not going to want to miss. So stay tuned. It'll be four, possibly five days of succulent nirvana. So thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you for liking and sharing this video. This has been Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity reporting from University City with the Grand Coral Reef and your succulent tip of the day and day one. Bye.